Please subscribe, like and share this content. It means a lot to us. Thank you in advance. Cornell Law School. UCC. Article 4. Bank Deposits and Collections. Part 2. Collection of Items. Depository in Collecting Banks. Paragraph 4209. Encoding and Retention Warranties. A. A person who encodes information on or with respect to an item after issue warrants to any subsequent collecting bank and to the payer bank or other payer that the information is correctly encoded. If the customer of a depository bank encodes, that bank also makes the warranty. B. A person who undertakes to retain an item pursuant to an agreement for electronic presentment warrants to any subsequent collecting bank and to the payer bank or other payer that retention and presentment of the item comply with the agreement. If a customer of a depository bank undertakes to retain an item, that bank also makes this warranty. C. A person to whom warranties are made under this section and who took the item in good faith may recover from the warrantor as damages for breach of warranty and amount equal to the loss suffered as a result of the breach, plus expenses and loss of interest incurred as a result of the breach. Paragraph 4210. Security interest of collecting bank and items, accompanying documents and proceeds. A. A collecting bank has a security interest in an item and any accompanying documents or the proceeds of either, 1. In case of an item deposited in an account, to the extent to which credit given for the item has been withdrawn or applied, 2. In case of an item for which it has given credit available for withdrawal as of right, to the extent of the credit given, whether or not the credit is drawn upon or there is a right of charge back, or 3. If it makes an advance on or against the item. b. If credit given for several items received at one time or pursuant to a single agreement is withdrawn or applied in part, the security interest remains upon all the items, any accompanying documents or the proceeds of either. For the purpose of this section, credits first given are first withdrawn. C. Receipt by a collecting bank of a final settlement for an item is a realization on its security interest in the item, accompanying documents, and proceeds. So long as the bank does not receive final settlement for the item or give up possession of the item or possession or control of the accompanying documents for purposes other than collection, the security interest continues to that extent and is subject to Article 9, but 1. No security agreement is necessary to make the security interest enforceable. Section 9203 B. 3. A. 2. No filing is required to perfect the security interest. And 3. The security interest has priority over conflicting perfected security interests in the item, accompanying documents, or proceeds. Paragraph 4211. When bank gives value for purposes of holder in due course. For purposes of determining its status as a holder in due course, a bank has given value to the extent it has a security interest in an item, if the bank otherwise complies with the requirements of section 3302 on what constitutes a holder in due course. Paragraph 4212. Presentment by notice of item not payable by, through, or at bank, liability of drawer or endorser. A. Unless otherwise instructed, a collecting bank may present an item not payable by, through, or at a bank by sending to the party to accept or pay a record providing notice that the bank holds the item for acceptance or payment. The notice must be sent in time to be received on or before the day when presentment is due and the bank must meet any requirement of the party to accept or pay under Section 3501 by the close of the bank's next banking day after it knows of the requirement. b. If presentment is made by notice and payment, acceptance, or request for compliance with a requirement under Section 3501 is not received by the close of business on the day after maturity or, in the case of demand items, by the close of business on the third banking day after notice was sent, the presenting bank may treat the item as dishonored and charge any drawer or endorser by sending it notice of the facts. Paragraph 4213. Medium and time of settlement by bank. A. With respect to settlement by a bank, 
The medium and time of settlement may be prescribed by Federal Reserve regulations or circulars, clearing house rules, and the like, or agreement. In the absence of such prescription, 1. The medium of settlement is cash or credit to an account in a Federal Reserve Bank of or specified by the person to receive settlement, and 2. The time of settlement is I. With respect to tender of settlement by cash, a cashier's check, or teller's check, when the cash or check is sent or delivered, Two, with respect to tender of settlement by credit in an account in a Federal Reserve Bank, when the credit is made. 3. With respect to tender of settlement by a credit or debit to an account in a bank, when the credit or debit is made or, in the case of tender of settlement by authority to charge an account, when the authority is sent or delivered, or IV. With respect to tender of settlement by a funds transfer, when payment is made pursuant to Section 4A-406A to the person receiving settlement. B. If the tender of settlement is not by a medium authorized by subsection A or the time of settlement is not fixed by subsection A, no settlement occurs until the tender of settlement is accepted by the person receiving settlement. C. If settlement for an item is made by cashier's check or teller's check and the person receiving settlement, before its midnight deadline, 1. Presence or forwards the check for collection, settlement is final when the check is finally paid. Or, 2. Fails to present or forward the check for collection, settlement is final at the midnight deadline of the person receiving settlement. D. If settlement for an item is made by giving authority to charge the account of the bank giving settlement in the bank receiving settlement, settlement is final when the charge is made by the bank receiving settlement if there are funds available in the account for the amount of the item. Paragraph 4 to 114 Right of chargeback or refund. Liability of collecting bank. Return of item. A. If a collecting bank has made provisional settlement with its customer for an item and fails by reason of dishonor, suspension of payments by a bank, or otherwise to receive settlement for the item which is or becomes final, the bank may revoke the settlement given by it, charge back the amount of any credit given for the item to its customer's account, or obtain a refund from its customer, whether or not it is able to return the item, if by its midnight deadline or within a longer reasonable time after it learns the facts it returns the item or sends notification of the facts. If the return or notice is delayed beyond the bank's midnight deadline or a longer reasonable time after it learns the facts, the bank may revoke the settlement, charge back the credit, or obtain a refund from its customer, but it is liable for any loss resulting from the delay. These rights to revoke, charge back, and obtain refund terminate if and when a settlement for the item received by the bank is or becomes final. b. A collecting bank returns an item when it is sent or delivered to the bank's customer or transfer or pursuant to its instructions. C. A depositary bank that is also the payer may charge back the amount of an item to its customer's account or obtain a refund in accordance with the section governing return of an item received by a payer bank for credit on its books, section 4301. D. The right to charge back is not affected by 1. Previous use of a credit given for the item or 2. Failure by any bank to exercise ordinary care with respect to the item, but a bank so failing remains liable. e. A failure to charge back or claim refund does not affect other rights of the bank against the customer or any other party. f. If credit is given in dollars as the equivalent of the value of an item payable in foreign money, the dollar amount of any chargeback or refund must be calculated on the basis of the bank offered spot rate for the foreign money prevailing on the day when the person entitled to the chargeback or refund learns that it will not receive payment in ordinary course. Paragraph 4 to 115. Final payment of item by payer bank. When provisional debits and credits become final. When certain credits become available for withdrawal. A. An item is finally paid by a payer bank when the bank has first done any of the following. 1. Pay the item in cash. 2. Settled for the item without having a right to revoke the settlement under statute, clearing house rule, 
or agreement, or 3. Made a provisional settlement for the item and failed to revoke the settlement in the time and manner permitted by statute, clearing house rule, or agreement. B. If provisional settlement for an item does not become final, the item is not finally paid. C. If provisional settlement for an item between the presenting and payer banks is made through a clearing house or by debits or credits in an account between them, then to the extent that provisional debits or credits for the item are entered in accounts between the presenting and payer banks or between the presenting and successive prior collecting bank seriatim, they become final upon final payment of the items by the payer bank. D. If a collecting bank receives a settlement for an item which is or becomes final, the bank is accountable to its customer for the amount of the item and any provisional credit given for the item in an account with its customer becomes final. E. Subject to I. Applicable law stating a time for availability of funds and 2. Any right of the bank to apply the credit to an obligation of the customer, credit given by a bank for an item in a customer's account, becomes available for withdrawal as of right. 1. If the bank has received a provisional settlement for the item, when the settlement becomes final and the bank has had a reasonable time to receive return of the item and the item has not been received within that time, 2. If the bank is both the depositary bank and the payer bank, and the item is finally paid, at the opening of the bank's second banking day following receipt of the item. F. Subject to applicable law stating a time for availability of funds and any right of the bank to apply a deposit to an obligation of the depositor, a deposit of money becomes available for withdrawal as of right at the opening of the bank's next banking day after receipt of the deposit. Paragraph 4 to 116. Insolvency and Preference. A. If an item is in or comes into the possession of a payer or collecting bank that suspends payment and the item has not been finally paid, the item must be returned by the receiver, trustee, or agent in charge of the closed bank to the presenting bank or the closed bank's customer. B. If a payer bank finally pays an item and suspends payments without making a settlement for the item with its customer or the presenting bank which settlement is or becomes final, the owner of the item has a preferred claim against the payer bank. C. If a payer bank gives or a collecting bank gives or receives a provisional settlement for an item and thereafter suspends payments, the suspension does not prevent or interfere with the settlements becoming final if the finality occurs automatically upon the lapse of certain time or the happening of certain events. D. If a collecting bank receives from subsequent parties settlement for an item, which settlement is or becomes final and the bank suspends payments without making a settlement for the item with its customer which settlement is or becomes final, the owner of the item has a preferred claim against the collecting bank.